right, good morning everyone. Day one of the Colorado BDR. So yesterday uh, we drove 700 miles in the truck. We took the two bikes, uh, Jeff 790 and my 890 uh, out here and we're gonna ride the entire Colorado BDR. Really excited because I've never done an entire BDR end to end. So hopefully gonna get this done in about four, four and a half, five days. And then we're gonna leave the truck here at this hotel. They're nice enough to let us do that. So we'll come back here after about four or five days and then we'll drive back to California with the bikes in the truck. So I think this is gonna be a really good way to do this, uh, but I guess we're about to find out. So we're gonna camp, we're gonna to try to camp every night. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna to try to be safe, have a great time, and I'll give you some updates along the way. Thanks for watching. All right, so we're just rolling through, just leaving for day one. We're rolling out of Cortez. We're uh, heading up, following the blue line here up to Dolores. So, so far, a beautiful day. We just got on the road, just trying to get all of our luggage settled and, and kind of get our bikes settled after unloading them from the truck and uh, get things dialed in. So, looks like it's gonna be a great trip. Hopefully we didn't forget anything at home. Well, actually I did forget something. I forgot my Garmin inReach, my satellite communicator. And just by random chance, uh, Jeff here also forgot his. So we're neither of us have a satellite communicator. So we're just gonna have to be extra careful uh, but you know what? There was a there was a day not too long ago when when nobody used we didn't have those things and we got by so Anyway, we'll catch up with you later Very pretty little town. This is the town of Dolores, Colorado, and it looks like we're about to turn off the main road and um, get on some sort of back road or hopefully a dirt road. One thing I've learned about traveling uh, in these kinds of towns and stuff, the speed limit will go from like 55 or 65 down to like 25 or 35 miles an hour, and you better slow down for that because there's always like a little small town police officer. Uh, usually checking people for that so just be mindful when you're going through these small towns people live here they don't like a lot of noise they don't they don't need speeding or people doing stuff like that all right we're hitting our first off-road section here and uh, we've already oh, I've got to find my way through here looks like we go this way There's a lot of uh, wayfinding on a BDR. A lot of little tracks going out through the forest and uh, you gotta always be paying attention to sort of your, if you're staying on track. So easy to get turned around kind of roads like this. The terrain is already, like it's pretty, you can see that we've got mud, we've got rocks, we've got hills, pretty big washouts. The terrain's already keeping things, you know, pretty interesting, I would say. You definitely can't just kick back and kind of cruise on a section like this, so. Makes things interesting, keeps you on your toes for sure. God, this 890 rally makes things so much easier. I mean, still a big bike, but the chassis and suspension are so good. Mo. Hey cows, move. Oh, look at the cute little calf. What's up, cow cows? Hi, babies. Thankfully, there's no charging bull. Right. The only charging bull is these KTMs. Well, I guess something sounds like it's loose on my bike. That's the whole bike because it's a KTM. I know, but something sounds like it's rattling. So I'm just gonna... Oh, you, you got your bike properly dirty. You see, you got some mud there. Sounds like it's rattling away back here. Might be my chain loose. Um, yeah, the chains make so much noise on these bikes. I mean, you know your bike, you've ridden it, so. 
Yeah, I think gear feels tight and shit right now. But. Uh, beautiful aspen trees here. I love getting up into the high country with the aspens. So beautiful. And in a couple weeks, these are going to be really pretty, like just bright golden, you know, yellow. It's just so pretty. So we just kind of came through one of the, I guess, the harder sections. We didn't, we didn't see that there was in like an easier way or whatever, but it wasn't too bad. It was just kind of rocky, kind of washed out, rutted, steep, you know, mud bogs, but nothing too crazy if you just take your time. I think what I have to remember about traveling on, on this type of route with a fully loaded adventure bike is just take it easy, don't push your don't push your luck, and enjoy the scenery and you'll probably be okay. Just don't rush, you know. <laughs> You're not on a dirt bike or a dual sport bike out here, especially with all your camping gear on it. So, so pretty through here. We just had a quick stop at Groundhog Reservoir where we just had a little snack, took a little break. Now we're headed up the mountains and our next stop is gonna be probably the town of Telluride for lunch. And then we're gonna head over Ofer Pass and then decide where to camp, probably somewhere in Uray tonight. Uray is a beautiful little town, so. It's just so gorgeous out here. I just can't believe how nice it is. Temperature's perfect, 75 degrees maybe. Couldn't be any better. So Jeff's already having famous GoPro drama. Yes. But what's the drama now? Microphone issues and then battery issues? Yeah, I bent my little microphone plug that goes in there when I dropped my helmet and went beep. Yeah. And then the battery keeps freezing up. So yep. we'll see. Typical GoPro stuff. Let's see if we got power. But look at the scenery, not bad. It's beautiful high country plateaus, aspen trees. Nobody really out here. We've seen like four or five riders today already. We're only about 40 or 50 miles in today. Bike's doing awesome, no complaints with that. It feels a little heavy, a little top heavy, and the rally is so tall that you just feel very tippy. Like you don't want to get on any, try to stop on any uneven ground. So we're descending into, I think we're descending into Tell, right? I don't know, we might have another pass to go, but just look at the scenery. Isn't it amazing, Jeff? It's amazing. It's phenomenal, isn't it? So this is your first time riding in Colorado, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it just gets better and better every turn. It, 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 and you haven't even seen anything yet. It gets better after this. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see how it could get better, but. So we're about maybe halfway, uh, not quite halfway through the first day. You can see the sand, we're getting into the San Juan Mountains. You can see here behind me. Everything's doing good. Say hi, Jeff. Hello. We're doing great. So yeah, great ride today so far. Looking forward to getting into the high country. I think I'm gonna go through on the left side here. pretty deep. I like to take it real easy on these water crossings. You just don't want to really throw your bike down into a deep puddle. It's not a good idea. Oh, that's aggressive. <laughs> How'd you get through? Real slow and careful, not like you. <laughs> <laughs> you just went through. I mobbed it. That was awesome. <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting, Jeff. I, maybe you should, I should send you through first as a scout. Like full speed? Like full speed ahead, like fifth gear. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to kind of go through this way and then um, right. I'll video you coming through. All right, I'll video. I'm already videoing you. really hope I don't screw this up. <laughs> okay. Oh! <laughs> 
Yay! <laughs> well, now I have to walk through the mud to get to you. I did. <laughs> Let me get the kickstand. There we go. No harm done. Charge! I was this close to drop her in that last big one. Really? In the big mud I puddle? I put her right yeah. sideways, and I don't know how I kept her up, but I did. That's awesome. Well, he she, dropped, sheer he, luck. He dropped his bike before the mud puddle, like oh, right there. as he was going in. Yeah, he I, just was gonna, I was trying oh, to put no. it into first gear, and then I put my foot down, and I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, Such sucks. a rookie move. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, if we need spare parts, we'll just keep following you guys. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're geeking out yeah. now. We got the same luggage too. Because yeah. we've been coming, we did south from Alcova, Wyoming on the BDR oh. down to here, but we skipped one and then did one today. That's awesome. And now we're going to head towards Grand Junction and maybe up towards Yellowstone or something. You know? Oh, wow. So you guys are on like a big trip? We got to Yeah, we're two weeks. Now. So we're now making, we're from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Oh, Ontario, really? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we're making our heading back that way and. We're going the opposite way, San Diego. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. And are you guys wrapping her up here? Or are you continuing through the BDR like you're doing more? We're doing the whole yeah, Colorado one. Yeah. Colorado. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we're pulling into Telluride, one of the most beautiful, scenic, great little towns on the Colorado BDR. I know this town has a lot of uh, mining history, uh, but also more recently it's, you know, you can see the uh, ski runs up here. And then it's really just a, a great tourist destination. People come here in the summer for hiking, mountain biking, motorcycle riders. Uh, so really, really beautiful little town. I've only been here maybe once or twice before, but it's uh, it's really a definitely a place you gotta see if you're riding, riding along this route. Okay, we had a great lunch in Telluride, fueled up, replenished our camel bags. Now we're headed, uh, we're on Highway 145, and we're headed to Ophir Pass, which is one of the steeper, rockier passes on uh, the BDR. And uh, from after that, hopefully we'll be able to stay in Ophir or Silverton, somewhere over there, and find a place, a good place to camp. Seems like all the campsites are full. Anyway, we'll figure something out, but uh, still absolutely gorgeous day completely beautiful uh, I've ridden this highway before all the way down to uh, to Dolores it's a great great highway ride anyway we'll uh, catch you in a minute when we hit Ophir Pass all right we're starting Ophir Pass it's already getting fairly rocky nice water crossings One of the biggest dangers of riding a pass like this is these uh, 4x4 vehicles because sometimes there's no room and they take up most of the trail. Plus nowadays there's just so many more people out on these trails than there used to be. 
We're not to the scary stuff yet. The scary stuff is up there. You see that up there. So I take, uh, I take full advantage of the traction control on the KTM. I'm using number seven because it keeps the slip, even if I open the throttle a lot, it keeps the bike in line. And that can really help on stuff like this. And if I need more slip, I can just dial it down here with the uh, thumb button because I've got the bike in uh, rally mode. The best thing to do on these types of trails is just uh, kind of keep a momentum, you know? So you see there's, I see at least one vehicle there. I don't know how narrow that is. And then there's another vehicle I think up there. I think that's the spot where you don't want to be uh, crossing with another Jeep, you know? Right. I don't know. I can't tell how wide it is. So we go all the way around there and we come down that? <laughs> yeah, 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 we just come down that right there, yeah. There's a Starbucks over there. All right, so we're heading up Ofer Pass. This is one of the famous passes on the BDR. Getting pretty rocky, pretty steep, but no problem so far. How you doing, Jeff? Good. Good? Looks awesome. We got to watch for the vehicles here coming down this pass because it gets super, super narrow. So you see, that's where we're going up here, up this steep shelf road. Real loose rock, shale, and there's a huge drop off on this side. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Just stay on your toes. Try not to uh, drive too fast. Okay, let's do this. Definitely want to stand up and use every advantage at your disposal for this. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. Whoo. Just keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Yeah, boy, get some, get some. I'm just riding at the top of first gear, just keep my momentum up. And I prefer to kind of keep this inside line uh, instead of going to the outside. Don't really like the exposure on the outside very much. Whew. Oh, that was fun. Holy shoot. <laughs> Whew. My lord. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to keep it going. That ain't no joke. No, it's no joke, right? Just don't slow down. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that lady was trying to go up it on that street bike. On a street bike, yeah, with the street tires. I can't believe I came down this on a V-Strom with street tires. Dude, you're, a man. you're an animal. That was ridiculous. There was a couple of those moments. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh. This is very rocky through here. Oh, 
oh holy moly this is rough this is tore up man oh sh Hope Jeff makes it through this. Oh, I'm out of breath, dude. Oh, f made it <laughs> so how was Ophir Pass Mr. Jeff that was probably probably one of the most challenging rides I've ever been on in my life <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's probably a little tougher than section one of California yeah that that's those rocks are insane yeah. that lasts like few hundred yards yeah holy smoke I mean you're just riding you're just riding on this on this like loose jagged shale like this, all this stuff is just loose, you know? It's like you're on a tile roof trying to walk up it sliding down. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, my heart rate was like racing. Definitely. I just didn't want to stop and get like fall over in that. Dude, that, that was, uh, I definitely recommend everyone to try that at least once in their life after they've practiced on some super hard stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smoke. Well, I think the good news is I think this side's pretty gentle. Yeah. Here we are, Ophir Pass, pretty awesome. That was a tough little ride this past. This past like a few hundred yards right there, like maybe a quarter mile, man, that was sketchy on a big bike, but we did it. I think so. Yeah, that's a dead end there. Well, we survived Ofer Pass. That was <laughs> that was really an adrenaline rush going over that thing. I'm so glad we didn't drop our bikes in that steep rocky section. That would have really sucked. We ran into some guys on dirt bikes up there, and they were just looking at us like we were insane. But hey, it is part of the BDR. It's the hard way, but it is designed for adventure bikes. You just got to have an adventurous spirit, I guess. So now we're on Highway 550, otherwise known as the Million Dollar Highway. One of the most scenic, uh, beautiful highways in the entire United States. I've done this ride before. It's an incredible, incredible road. It runs from uh, Durango in the south up to uh, Ridgeway uh, in the north. And it goes through like Silverton and all of the classic, you know, mountain towns. It's, uh, well, you can see the scenery. So you got Red Mountain Pass, which we'll see in a second. Uh, but it's just stunning, absolutely stunning through here. One of my favorite areas in the whole country right here. So anyway, uh, we're gonna get down the road and uh, yeah, catch up with you in a minute. So this is one of the most dramatic parts of uh, Highway 550 going through these rocks here. I don't know what they call this section, but kind of already came over Red Mountain Pass. This is just so stunning through here. You can see the road going all the way, all the way down that way. So Uray is somewhere down in, in there. Uh, well, not in there, but further down this highway. There's so many people out and about today. So Jeff and I just realized that, duh, this is Labor Day weekend. So it's Sunday and we're wondering why all the campgrounds are full, all the hotels are full. Everything's just crazy. It's because it's Labor Day weekend. We just weren't even thinking about that. Um, but that's what it is. So it's going to be very challenging to find a spot to sleep tonight. But we'll figure something out. 
All right, it's the end of our first day on the Colorado BDR. So for those of you who don't know, BDR, Backcountry Discovery Routes, is a nonprofit organization here in the USA, and they put together amazing backcountry off-road routes through all different states, uh, beautiful, beautiful routes, and it's a nonprofit. They do amazing work, so very grateful to them. Check them out. So this is so steep and loose, like I can barely walk on this. I'm not gonna walk it up. Let me let me take at least a photo here. It's actually a pretty impressive waterfall. It'd be cool to see that when it was like really going, you know. And he's down. 